want it to be, what color do you want it to be, what the x position is, what the y position is. Or maybe I'll say, hey, I'll create a circle and you can specify the radius and the color and I'll, def I'll, I'll default the position to something. Maybe the upper left corner of the screen or maybe the center of the screen or something like that. All right. So you get to define the constructors. Now, thing about constructors are, and any functions, is that I can define them with multiple arguments and multiple combination of arguments, but no two functions or constructors can have the same number and types of arguments. For example, if I had a constructor in arg that I used to set the radius, I could not have a second constructor whose only argument was an int argument that set the x position of it, that, de that defaulted the other values and set the x position. So it's not the name of the function or the constructor that makes it unique, it's a combination of arguments. So the, the, the arguments, both in terms of the number of arguments and the types of the arguments, has to be unique. And that only makes sense, right? The compiler can figure out, if I call this function, if I call this constructor and I pass one integer, it knows which constructor I want. It wants. It wants the one that has a one integer. If I call it and give it an integer and a string, it knows what I want as well. If I were to have two constructors, both which accepted only an integer, then if I called that constructor, the compiler would have no idea do I want constructor one or constructor two. So therefore, you have to define uh, the, the combination of, of the, the name of the function or the constructor um, and the kinds of arguments and number of arguments has to be unique. There's one more topic relating to constructors that we need to address, and we'll address that um, next week. And that is when you have a super subclass relationship, when you have an inheritance relationship. There's rules about the constructor. The interesting thing about these is, that, at least in my mind, if you try to memorize the rules and say, here's the rules for the constructors, it may seem very confusing. If you sort of understand the purpose for it and how it actually works then, then you don't need to memorize the rules and it'll make sense to you. So, as we're doing this, I don't want to just blurt out rules and say you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do that. Instead, I want to go through some examples and talk about what works, what doesn't work, and why it works or doesn't work. All right? Then hopefully you'll understand the reasoning behind it and, and you'll understand it on a deeper level. So at any rate, and next week we will talk about constructors relating to um, um, inheritance. What I would like you to do between now and next class, which is next Monday, is look through in the textbook the chapters about Java that are in the appendix that are listed in the syllabus. In the syllabus, I think for week one and two or week one, two, and three, I indicate that we're going to be reviewing Java. I want you to make sure you've re read through those and bring whatever questions you have to class. So if it all makes perfect sense to you, fine, it all makes perfect sense to you. If you're not sure about the syntax for an if statement or for a loop or for um, object reference variables or whatever, bring those questions to class. And uh, ideally, I'd like you to email them to me uh, before the class. but. At the very least, bring the questions to class for next time uh, of what you're, you're fuzzy on in the, the Java review section uh, of the text. All right, we'll see you over in the lab.